Pentagon war planners have rightfully said that 90% of modern warfare is informational. That's why it's more important than ever that all of you watching subscribe on YouTube, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter at Real Alex Jones, because InfoWars is the front line of the fight. And without your help and support, we will fail. With your support and with your prayers, we will be victorious against the globalists together. A few thoughts now on what is arguably the most politically corrupt department in the history of the American government. I'm speaking, of course, of the Obama Justice Department, led by two attorneys general, Eric Holder, who ultimately became the first sitting cabinet officer ever to be cited for contempt of Congress, and his successor, who is working on matching his record, Loretta Lynch. She, according to the fire director of the FBI, obstructed justice in ordering James Comey to refer to the Clinton email investigation as a matter rather than an investigation for the purpose of allowing the Clinton campaign to deny the Democratic nominee was under federal investigation. Today, we learned of the prospect of additional corruption on the part of the Obama Justice Department at issue why Attorney General Lynch went to almost unprecedented lengths to permit a Russian attorney to enter the country without a visa, long before meeting Donald Trump Jr. and Jared Kushner. Not the first scandal to plague that agency, of course. This meeting took place on June 9th of last year. But it is unclear now not only why A.G. Lynch would have given her an extraordinary waiver of U.S. immigration laws, but how that Russian attorney could have been in the country some five months after the expiration of that so-called immigration parole waiver. The Senate Judiciary Committee is now investigating Lynch's efforts to protect Hillary Clinton and the role of not only A.G. Lynch, but the fired FBI director as well. There is much to learn about the collusion between the Russian attorney and the Obama administration. But the political motivations of the Obama Department of Justice are readily recognized. It is all, all about partisan politics. In fact, of the more than $400,000 in donations to Clinton and Trump during the election from DOJ employees, 97% of their money went to Hillary Clinton. <laughs> Lou Dobbs is great. He's one of the, the best journalists working today, the best commentators working today, and that's the kind of information that you're going to rarely find, and that's, of course, what people attack Lou Dobbs so much, even though he has an impeccable track record. There's so much corruption in the Department of Justice that Jason Chaffetz from the House of Representatives actually replied to Trump's Twitter and said, why are you not, why is your Department of Justice not prosecuting people? This was an amazing thing. I don't think there's ever been anything like this in the history That's of the world. That's amazing. Trump had tweeted out something about um, Hillary Clinton, and Chaff has said, why don't you just prosecute him? Well, I'll tell you why, because I have inside sources at the highest level of DOJ. Love you it. You can't hire anybody. If you try to hire anybody who actually wants to hold the Hillary Clintons, uh, the Clinton family accountable under the law, you'll never get a job. But look at how many people the special prosecutor Mueller has hired. Why is it that the special prosecutor whose job is to conduct a witch hunt on low-level government employees, why is he hiring new people all the time? Taxpayers, we're going to have to pay that. We're going to have to pay that bill. Why is Fox <coughs> News and CNN and Washington Post and New York Times not talking about how much that's going to cost taxpayers? Ken Starr built something around $50 million to investigate Bill Clinton. And again, Bill Clinton's a bad guy. I'm not going to be here to defend Bill Clinton. But what they got Bill Clinton for and impeached him for wasn't even the subject of the investigation. It was a completely unrelated matter, $50 million. He asked me $50 million in taxpayer money for that kind of sideshow might not be the best use of our money. So how many hundreds of millions, because think about how much, and they like Clinton. So imagine how many hundreds of millions of dollars they're going to spend to go after Trump. And more importantly, low-level employees. No, nobody now, nobody wants to talk about that, how much that's going to cost. Nobody wants to talk about why the Department of Justice cannot hire competent people because Johnny DeStefano, who's head of personnel 
and that hiring kills anything. The running joke now in the White House, and this, and this is serious, this is what people say, this isn't me thinking, oh, this is funny. They go, the only way to get hired in the Department of Justice at the White House is to have tweeted, never Trump. This is the reality. Ren's previous chief of staff, why is he allowing this? Johnny Stefano, why hasn't he been fired? Why is the Department of Justice not hiring prosecutors to go after them? James Comey, you'll remember, there was a great article, I think they called him Clinton's um, bag man. That was Comey. Comey cleared her in any kind of investigation that ever came up in her life or Bill's life. He completely cleared her. Loretta Lynch, why isn't she in prison? Susan Rice, why hasn't she been prosecuted for violating the law for spying on American citizens? None of that. In fact, the media wants to pretend that Susan Rice doesn't exist. Remember, Susan Rice said, I didn't unmask anybody. PBS goes, okay. Then she got busted. And then everybody had her on the next day, and they didn't even ask her. Hey, lie to her face. There was no outrage and outcry in the media about how Susan Rice had lied to them. They didn't say, oh, this is alternative facts. And Susan Rice was spreading alternative facts. No, they, they want to pretend like it didn't happen. So what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? To, oh, people don't like Susan Rice because she's a woman. Oh, she's a victim now. So I, I love this, how the, I love, I love how these powerful people, people at the highest level of government are victims now. Foreign policy, for example, did the same thing with me. They wrote an article about me and they quoted people who had been to CIA for three decades. Alex and I talked about this, I think Monday. And they made me out to be a bully. They go, people in the CIA are afraid of, afraid of my, I'm sorry, I'm laughing. That is how absurd it truly is. People in the CIA are afraid of Mike Cernovich. Really? Why? Because I do journalism, because I tell the truth. Right. And by the way, foreign policy, that was done in conjunction with Just Security. And if you go to the Just Security's website, justsecurity.org, and you look at who funds it, our good friend George Soros does. Just Security, so that hit piece on me was actually funded by George Soros. That's why when people tell you, it's all connected. George Soros is funding hit pieces on me, and in these hit pieces, they're claiming, oh, I'm going after civil servants. People in the CIA now, that's what you call them? People with badges and guns and power, the ability to spy on American citizens, those are just humble civil servants, and like a, like a mailman or something? That's, that's where the narrative is shifting, and that's what they're doing. And our media is frivolous. There is a, a meme that kind of spread, and I, I now call it Two Scoops. I will, it's called the CNN's Two Scoops of Journalism and Excellism, Excellence in Journalism Award. That comes, of course, from CNN's report that Donald Trump, when he, oh God, this is so dumb. These people are so dumb. The, the media world that we live in is all rush of conspiracy theory and then complete and total stupidity instead of talking about real issues. So you'll all remember Donald Trump had, he's a regular at Trump Hotel because he owns it. He has dinner with people. Dessert arrives and everybody gets a typical dessert. But because the people know Trump, they give him two scoops of ice cream. They give him an extra scoop. And that was a whole special on CNN. So we call that two scoop journalism. So Chris Clezio, or however you say his name, I'm giving him the two scoops award in journalism for this clip of Trump and Macron shaking hands. So if you go to Chris Colasio's Twitter, I don't, know how to, I don't know how to say these people's names. I don't talk to them. That's the great thing about being an outsider. A lot of people go, Cernovich, are you, do you deliberately mispronounce people's names or do you just don't know? I'm such an outsider and I don't watch cable news and I'm such an outsider. I don't talk to these people. I don't schmooze with them. I don't go to cocktail parties with them in D.C. When I'm in D.C., I, I just meet with the people. So I'm out in California. I don't even know how to pronounce the guy's name. But he does a and I, and I, he does a second by second analysis of the handshake between Trump and Macron. So let's see if we can find that. It's Salitza, on his um, Twitter. Right? He wrote an article on it too, CNN. It's, yes. So let, as, oh. as you know, the, the, the video surfaced of Trump and Macron. Let me tell you something. Silla, whatever his name is, he's the biggest douche of all. Macron shaking hands, and I think they shook hands for like thirty seconds because yeah, they were in some that. kind of. Like alpha male contest, and Macron played a hand <sighs> again. This is CNN. This is what they do. CNN doesn't want to do real journalism. 
So what they do is they pay some guy, Chris Clasio, $200,000 to do a second-by-second -second analysis of the Trump-Macron handshake. That's what CNN does. Uh, it's like a goofy thing. So I actually, you know, my video crew made a really funny video. Of the, it's funny, right? You watch it. It's a funny thing. They're shaking hands, and you can tell Macron is trying to play, like, alpha male games with him and won't let go. So then Trump thinks, well, hey, you did this to me last time. So how about I not let you do it to me again? But then CNN, that's what the guy does. He's live blogging a handshake. When they're not talking about handshakes, they're talking about two scoops of ice cream. When they're not talking about two scoops of ice cream, they're talking about a Reddit user posting a GIF and how they're going to blackmail a Reddit user into not posting GIFs about them anymore. And they'll dox them if you post another GIF. And this is a $20 billion corporation. What has happened to journalism in America? where they find it newsworthy how many scoops of ice cream President Trump eats and how you know many seconds he, he shook somebody's hands. And then they care about gifts of Trump and CNN and pro wrestling. They're, they're utterly frivolous. That is, of course, the why we're all growing. And for us to keep growing, we do need your support. And right now there is a massive, massive 30% special at InfoWarsLife.com and InfoWarsStore.com. Uh, Brain Force is now 30% off. Superman Vitality is 30% off. Survival Shield is 30% off. It is the big July extravaganza, the big July sale, 30% off all these products. Because you remember, InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com, this is a self-funded operation that they're, they're running. I've been there. It's an impressive operation. It's better than CNN. And they do real journalism. Now, now, sure, we joke around, we goof off, you know, Alex goofs off, you know, we have fun. Doesn't mean we don't have fun, but we do real journalism, we break real news, we break real stories. Remember the Susan Rice unmasking scandal? I broke that. Here I am on InfoWars. CNN didn't break that story. New York Times didn't break that story. Washington Post didn't break it. Bloomberg didn't break it. Boston Globe didn't break it. LA Times, right here I broke it. Mike Cernovich, who works with InfoWars. That's what you're getting when you support the story, you're getting original journalism, hard-hitting reporting. And when we talk about the ice cream, and we talk about the handshakes, and we talk about the fun stuff, we laugh and we have a good time. We don't do it. Here's what they do. They go, oh, my God, Trump, he had two scoops of ice cream, and his guests only had one scoop. This proves that Trump is a pathological narcissist. Here is our panel of five people, of psychologists. Hey, would you opine? about Trump is having two scoops of ice cream and everybody else has one scoop, evidence, mental illness, and mental history, and then all these doctors will, will, will opine about it. But then when at InfoWars and I report that Hillary Clinton has Parkinson's disease as diagnosed by a physician, they go, well, how dare you diagnose somebody? You can't have a doctor diagnose somebody that the, that the doctor has never treated. You can't have a doctor look at observable treatment and observable history and diagnose a person, you can't do that. But then the very next segment, they'll say, okay, well, Trump had two scoops of ice cream, less really bad, maybe he's a narcissist, you know, we'll have all these doctors come on and diagnose him and, and figure it out, or maybe he's gonna get diabetes and extra ice cream or whatever. That's CNN. You know how much a profit they're gonna make a year? But when I tell you this, you're not gonna believe it, because I didn't believe it when I read this. The AT&T Time Warner merger value CNN at $20 billion. Again, this is real news, not fake news. This is real news. When I read the number, I didn't believe it, so I had to fact check it. The Time Warner AT&T merger value CNN at $20 billion. It's a $20 billion mega behemoth international corporate conglomerate. They're going to make this year $1 billion in profit. One billion dollars in profit. If you, if Infowars had one billion dollars for one year in profit, the operation would grow by ten times, and it would be self-funded and perpetuate. You would perpetuate. You wouldn't need to ever do it again. You and, and perpetuity. There you go. Yeah. You would not even need to ever raise any money again. So CNN is going to have one billion dollars. What's that money going to do? Bloated offices, bloated salaries, paying people like Chris Colizio. You know, five hundred thousand dollars a year to to analyze Donald Trump's ice cream habits, to analyze his handshaking, 
there's no real news. They're not out actually breaking news. You never see them at the riots. Where were they with Antifa? You never see them on the streets. I marched with the protesters at the DNC. 10 miles I marched in 100 degree heat. Didn't see CNN. They weren't there. They weren't covering the truth about burning Sanders supporter, uh, supporters. And in fact, that's actually why it's one thing that Megyn Kelly and the fake news media will never tell you. A lot of people who are maybe quote unquote left wing are watching InfoWars right now and are listening to InfoWars because they want real news and they want alternative news and they want alternative media. And during the election, they go, wait a minute, we're having a protest of 15,000 people at the DNC. But when we turn on CNN, the whole headline is DNC unites around Hillary Clinton. She's amazing. She's great. Everybody loves Hillary. While outside, everybody's talking about WikiLeaks. Big, huge, massive pushback against the DNC. So if you're a liberal, you turn on, or a left winger, and you turn on the TV, you don't see the truth. They're not showing those big protests. Fox News finally, or Fox Business did finally after a couple of days, Lou Dobbs did, because again, Lou Dobbs, who we had earlier, is a legitimate journalist and a legitimate reporter. Megyn Kelly's not covering that kind of stuff. Jay Tapper's not kind of covering that stuff. They all work with a narrative, a fake news narrative. Speaking of which, WikiLeaks released an email that people had had before, but it became relevant again. Bill Clinton was paid $500,000 by Russia. Bloomberg, I believe, is the outlet was going to report on the story, and they, PR people, quote, killed the story. How, how are they killing these stories? Bill Clinton got $500,000 for Russia to give a one-hour speech, and then, of course, that $500,000 doesn't include how he flies out there on private, private jets and all the women and prostitutes and everything that he had. Hold on. They Clinton the story? Get the hell out of here. They Clinton it? Wow. As in there. That doesn't include any of that. So, yeah, Hillary Clinton's campaign killed a story linking um, opposing sanctions, and Bill Clinton paid $500,000. How were they able to kill these kind of stories? Who killed that story? What, Clinton's what, what campaign? Unquote, Clinton the story? story. This Hold is on. something people don't know. Clinton's campaign? Clinton the story? And this is why I love doing journalism on journalism. What happened is the, quote, reporter who had that story was going to was gonna run it. And then Hillary Clinton's people go, well, hey, how about if you don't run it? We'll give you an interview with Hillary, or we'll give you an interview with John Podesta, or we'll give you an interview with Umar or somebody. It's called access journalism. They traded a favor so that guy, that journalist, killed the story, which was true, high impact, all true, but it would also hurt Hillary, so he probably didn't want to publish it anyway. That's another dirty secret is when they find stories critical of the Clintons, they don't even want to publish it. They're looking for a way out. What he did was he took a quid pro quo, took a bribe, and said, okay, well, I'll kill this story. But what I want is an interview with Hillary Clinton or Bill or Uma or maybe Chelsea, and I want a little bit of puff piece, and I'll, and I'll give you what you want. That's what you get in the mainstream media. On, and for is where you get real media. We don't make those kind of deals. We do journalism. Susan Rice unmasking every big story of the year. Don't be mad at, at me. I'm trying to make it perfect for you. Oh, it's over anyway? No. Yeah. What the aging process is, is when the cell replicates, we lose a little bit of our telomeres. Telomeres are the little cups okay. at the end of our... That is the end of that. The Pentagon war planners have rightfully said that not... Okay, so I had a little technical difficulties at the end. That's what we call... That's what I call real news. <laughs> Non-edited. Yeah, but... Everything that that guy just said was 100% true. Uh, you know, despite my joking around, that was some serious talk that guy was spitting out. Mike Chernovich. Uh, don't forget to check out our last video, Meme Wars. You need to watch that. It'll make your day. Thanks for watching. Not fake news. And I recommend checking out Mike Cernovich and InfoWars. Don't forget to share, subscribe, and smash that like button. See you next time. Not Fake News.